Hi, hi, and welcome to Strap a Watch. I'm Michael Knapp with Michael Knapp Leather. First thing I want to say is thank you so much to all of you subscribers. You guys rock. I just, I can't tell you what it's like for me and how much effort and work and time I put into each one of my shows. And for anybody that's newer, you know, please subscribe if you haven't. We're really trying to build this channel, create a community and a family of, you know, fellow watch enthusiasts, leather crafters, people that are into style, fashion, design, travel, all kinds of cool stuff we cover on this channel. Uh, and primarily you're seeing me hand make some type of leather item, mainly watch straps. That's what I specialize in now. But you know, it's, it's a unique show and I put a lot into each show. So I appreciate, you know, the feedback that you guys have been giving me. It just, it, it makes me smile a big smile every time I open up and I look at your comments and I just, I can't tell you. All right. Cause it is, it's a labor of love and a lot of work. People that are newer may not know. I own another business. Uh, I'm an audio prostologist. So Monday through Thursday, nine to five, I'm running a hearing healthcare clinic where, you know, I do hearing testing, uh, hearing aids, uh, hearing protection, in-ear monitors for mus musicians. I have a number of rock stars and, you know, older rock stars, most of them lose their hearing. So stuff like that. And uh, Fridays I have off and all the weekend I, I dedicate to really the show and getting product done. And the only night I really take off is Tuesday nights when we have our granddaughter and we take care of our granddaughter. So, you know, it's, it's a labor of love. People even that know me very well, they'll say, how do you do it? You know, how are you doing all of this stuff? You know, I mean, making all these leather straps, running the hearing clinic, doing this show. And I usually put a show out each weekend I have for the last uh, just over six months every weekend you know and it's for me to not get too stressed out I'm not gonna say oh it's at 8 a.m. on Saturday morning Eastern time I'm just not going to do that it does come out either Friday Saturday or Sunday sometime during a weekend at least one show sometimes I do two shows in a week but mainly one show every weekend okay just so you guys are aware and I try to really produce some good content and quality. There's a lot to my show. And uh, the other thing I wanted to say thank you about, secondly, is for all of you that have ordered leather goods from me, especially watch straps, but you've seen me in the last few months making an iPad case for Dr. Libby in Chicago, a subscriber, and also a bifold wallet for him. And, and some other things, you know, passport wallets, minimalist wallets, some more bifold wallets. Uh, and I used to have a lot of other goods and stuff for sale on my website until about a year ago when I really started specializing in just mainly watch straps. I do have a couple other products on my website for sale, but mainly it's now just watch straps. And I'll go into that. I'll tell you what, into the second half of the show and let you guys know how many products of watch straps I made in the last few months since the shutdown. It even blows my mind. All right, we'll go into that. But a couple weeks ago, I had a subscriber. His name is Joe out of Las Vegas. So, hey, Joe, and thank you for the orders. Yes, orders. He first contacted me a couple weeks ago, like I said, through my website, inquiring about a peanut tan alligator strap for his Christopher Ward Trident GMT with the blue dial, just like mine. His is in 42 millimeters. Mine is in 38 millimeters. And, you know, with the blue dial, after going back and forth on stitching colors, he decided on a navy royal blue stitching, tiger thread stitching for his watch strap. Well, then, he inquired about perhaps having made out of the same alligator skin a business card holder type of a, a wallet. And I was like, ooh, I, didn't, I knew I didn't have enough 
alligator in this color to make an entire minimalist wallet. I knew I didn't have that much. And I have two other straps in this same color, the same alligator hide to get out right now that I need some of the belly. Uh, and I told him, I said, I don't have that much. I do have a tail section. The only way it would work is if we integrate it with leather. All right, make the pockets perhaps out of the alligator. And I gave him some ideas. I, I said, you know, I could do a folding style, two pockets inside with the, the alligator and it would be this much and if you did it in you know this type of leather it'd be this much or you can do a three pocket minimalist wallet all the way up to with shell cordovan well that's what he chose shell tan shell cordovan okay integrated with the same uh, alligator the peanut alligator as the pockets on on both sides and then there's a main center pocket you could fold, put cash in, what have you. But it turned out gorgeous. And you're gonna be seeing me hand make this today on today's episode. And also, I wanna showcase this new product line that I'm gonna be utilizing on edging. Okay, so on the edging of watch straps and other leather goods, I just received this on Friday. I'm filming this intro on May 31st, Sunday, May 31st, which happens to be my brother's birthday. So happy birthday, Rokan, I love you, brother. I know he watches the show, but I had been waiting on this product and it arrived on Friday, like I said. It's a three-part system. I've never used anything like this before. And oh my gosh, am I pleased with this. The, I'll tell you, I can't wait to show you some macro shots of both of these items that I made for Joe. And I'll also be showing you, and it, the guy's name is Mike out of Atlanta. And I had gotten done with this about a week ago, but I've been waiting on this edge paint and this system to do the edging on this uh, more royal blue uh, alligator strap for his watch. So thank you, Mike, for being patient. I told him, you know, hang on, because these were, you know, they're my guinea pigs for this new system. So I had ordered Mike the blue and Joe the tan and applied it as a base coat that you put on first and then a, a finishing. And this one is in a gloss. I just also ordered the matte finish. So it's a three-part system. And I've, now that it's, I know it works so well, last night I ordered just about every color that I know I will use. So this is what I'm gonna be going to and I'm so excited about it. So that's what you're gonna see on today's episode. And we'll talk about some other things. Stick around after the intro, we'll get right into it. Thank you so much for joining me today on Strap a Watch. And here is the tan shell cordovan for the center pocket that you're going to be seeing me cut out of Joe's three pocket minimalist wallet. Well, I told you guys during the intro I'd let you in on how busy I have been and some of the other things like, you know, how did I get into specializing in watch straps? Why don't I make all these other products on my website anymore? I, I get slammed with that question a lot. So anyways, you know, down here in Florida, we ended up getting shut down. It was the weekend of March, I believe it was 20th, uh, because I, I, we shut down the hearing clinic on March 23rd. So the, the weekend of March 20th, is when the hearing clinic we knew was going to end up being shut down. And on March 20th, from that date until just today, okay, today, I have made 48 watch straps to fulfill orders. 48. 
That's a lot of watch straps. I've had people ask me, how long does it take for me to make a watch strap? There's the base coat, a Giardini, Giardini base coat. So I love this new system. It takes me on average about seven, eight hours to make a watch strap for a customer. There's the edge paint, and then you'll see the gloss finish next. To make one for myself, I can really hammer one out for me in about four hours, three, four hours. I've made them in three hours before. But, you know, when I'm making one for a customer, I am going to take a lot more time so that I know the quality is there than making them for myself. And there's Repton. I said this recently. Anybody that's getting a watch strap made of alligator, that is the product you should get. You can get it pretty reasonably priced on Amazon. And what you do is you just apply a thin layer. You can apply all over the strap. I have a I have a bad habit of saying all over the watch. And a lot of times what I'm meaning is strap. Okay, you guys, just I apologize for that, but I do. I, I notice when I run a playback and I'm like, oh, I did it again. I said watch instead of strap. And you, uh, you can apply it even on the lining. So you can put it all over the entire strap and let it sit in for about 15 minutes. And then buff it out with a microfiber cloth. And what it's going to do is going to keep the scales and the, the alligator skin conditioned. This is called a Regad machine. It's a heater that heats up these tips. There's all kinds of different tips that you can get. It's a creaser. It's a burnisher. It's an edger. It does all kinds of great things. It's very popular in European leather crafting not so much here in the states it's out of france and i bought this machine about four years ago once i started actually michael knapp leather as a business so just to let you guys know too okay i have been anybody that's newer i have been leather crafting since 1989 i started making knife sheaths back in 1989 and I have not been doing leather crafting the whole time. I mean, I would pick it up for years, and then I'd put it down for years, and I'd pick it up for years, and put it down for years. And, you know, when I started back up, oh gosh, I don't know how many years ago, 10, like really full time, I decided to, uh, you know, make more things than than just knife sheaths and, and gun holsters. That's kind of what was my specialty back, say, in the 90s and, and 2000s, you could say. Okay. And so I started making wallets and belts and then, you know, placemats. I got into placemats. Actually, in the 90s, I made some placemats. But, um, man, you know, what happened was... I kept getting requests from family members, friends, friends of friends, friends of family members, you know, requesting, say, six place mats and two hot pads. And the leather alone was $200. I mean, I was losing my skin, you know, making leather products for all these people. I, I You know, you want to make stuff for yourself, and I would always be so busy, I couldn't even make my own stuff. I, You know, I'm trying to fill... You know, people's requests, not business orders or anything. They're not paying me. And I kept having people say, no, listen, I'll pay you. I'll pay you. You know, make me this gun holster. One of the reasons I got away from really knife sheaths and gun holsters, uh, especially gun holsters, and I was making a lot of gun holsters for cops back in the 90s. Um, they get so picky about little things. <laughs> it's... And it was driving me nuts. I mean, it got to the point, it, I, it was no fun anymore. You know, here I had bought all what are called the blue guns. They're like a dummy replica of a certain type of a gun, whether it's, a, you know, a Glock 19 or a 1911 and, you know, this model and this make. I mean, I had tons of them. I, I ended up selling all of them back in the 90s. And you use that to form, because what you do is you actually soak the veg tan leather in water covering the blue gun and you form it around the leather around the gun and that's how you can get that click you know where the when you when you holster your pistol it, it'll actually click into place into the leather holster if you do it right 
And I mean, these cops were so, and I have a lot of friends that are cops. Okay. I mean, I, I'm an avid shooter and I shoot with a lot of different cops and, you know, the cops here in my hometown of Orange Park, Florida, they're just tremendous. It's just, they're great guys. They, they keep an eye on our homes and our businesses. And it's, they're just great. But these, you know, as a customer buying a, a, a gun holster, oh my gosh, you know, and they're always trying to talk you down and it would take me days and days to make one holster, you know. And they're like, $50, oh my God, I can, you know, so I just, I, finally I just said, that's it. I'm, you know, it was no fun. Same thing, really, I'm sorry, but with the placemats, they just, you know, two and a half weeks for me to make placemats. So most of the people who do leather crafting and turn it into a business have to specialize in something, whether that's belts, whether that's holsters or knife sheaths, whatever it might be. I'm just such a watch nut, you know, watch enthusiast, that it was almost inevitable. And so it was right almost a year ago, I, I made my first watch strap for myself. Okay, I had made one in the past, you know, for another watch. But I, I bought some alligator, and it was black alligator. And I, I made myself my first alligator strap about a year ago right now and it was so fun and I loved it and it you know yeah it took about four or five hours you know and put it on my watch and I was like oh wow this is great this is great you know and then I started looking at pricing of alligator straps and I was like holy cow and so then fast forward to about middle of July of last year okay so again I'm I'm filming this and finalizing this video, this episode, on May 23rd of 2020, or May 31st, I'm sorry, of 2020, May 31st. So, middle of July of 2019, on a Monday morning at 4.30 in the morning, and mind you, I have to be at the Hearing Healthcare Clinic that morning, I wake up with this entire vision of this channel, Strap a Watch in my head. And I went out. I, I couldn't fall back to sleep. Even the name, everything was just like, it was like God gave me this vision. I can't explain it. I don't know if I was dreaming it, but I mean, it was super powerful. So I went out on my front porch, brought out my laptop, had made a cup of coffee, and I just brainstormed everything. Okay. Now this little building, this little leather studio shop that I have was not here. Okay. Okay. Uh, I, I wrote that down. I, I needed something that's going to be isolated, that's going to have you know its own power, that's going to have air conditioning and heat, that's going to be finished, that I can turn into also where I can shoot YouTube video. Uh, I didn't have any camera equipment. The only thing I had ever filmed with really was an iPhone. So... <laughs> I mean, no DSLR cameras, no mirrorless cameras. I had to research all that. I had never really edited anything except through, what is that called, iMovie or something? You know, I, I had done that, so that's very limited. When I when I ordered, because I went out and I also bought a brand new MacBook Pro. I had I had a MacBook Pro, but I needed another one because that one I wanted for for other things. I wanted one dedicated just for this and I also bought it's called Final Cut Pro 10 or Pro X and when I opened it up oh my gosh talk about like you know being overwhelmed I was absolutely overwhelmed and all I did was I went on YouTube watched tutorials on how to use Final Cut and learned all on my own, everything. I mean, everything I've I've had to do was was learning, you know, through the school of hard knocks and trial and error. And so everything you see, this is you know now strap a watch the shows. Um, you know, I had the building built and it was spray foam insulated. It had its own electrical system put in with its own panel and air conditioning and heat. I have a rubber flooring system and a lot of sound treatments in here so that the sound quality of the shows are good. 
you know, and, and then all the camera and the lighting gear, everything. I mean, I had to get everything. So think of the investment that I put into this to actually do this show. I mean, my wife still thinks I'm nuts, but I have a really strong faith and belief in this show. I do. I know I'm just coming up on 900 subscribers after six months. And I bet, I bet and guarantee most people would give up. I'm not one of those kind of guys. I've said it from the very beginning. I am in this for the long haul. All right. And it's not about the numbers. It's about the quality of the shows and building the community. And the, you know, with the whole hope of if you're like minded like I am, and I know some of you are because you watch every show and you give me feedback and comments on just about every show, that there's others like us out there. And they're going to end up finding it. And this is going to continue to grow and grow and grow. It's not a fly-by-night, flash-in-the-pan, instant success kind of a show. I mean, I bet everybody wishes their YouTube channel were, me included. I am not going to lie about that. I wish my numbers were bigger, but it's not all about that. It's really not. It's about quality, just like the watch straps. It's about the quality and it's so neat still being as small as I am. I'm able to reply to every comment. I mean, really, every every comment left on my YouTube channel, I have replied to. And, you know, I love giving thumbs ups and little loves of heart, uh, hearts and uh, hearts of love. There's my dyslexia. So it's just, you know, it's a labor of love, like I was saying. I absolutely totally enjoy the entire process the filming everything and you got to understand i mean my show like i was saying in the beginning it's very involved i mean really when you think about it you know i am making a leather product so i am shooting tons of different shots different lighting different camera angles you know so i'm having to build leather products and shoot film of it at the same time make sure everything's in focus and um you know, so I am also have the intro in the very beginning where I tell you what the video is going to be about. And I underlay music under all of this. Then I play my graphical intro. And then I showcase all of this footage of me hand making something. And I put music underlay of that. And then I also do a voiceover here on this second part. Uh, it's exactly what I'm doing right now of explaining, you know, either what I'm doing or telling you stories from life or telling you like what I am telling you about today is kind of how strap a watch got started, why I specialize in watch straps. I love watches. That's really, really why. And it's just a better business model. And, it, you know, you do what you love, right? I mean, I was hating making placemats. So I stopped doing them. Hating making gun holsters, so I stopped doing them. You know, so I mean, check this out. I mean, there's Joe's watch strap with the uh, the new edging on there. It's just it's it's gorgeous. So this new edge system, I had already applied the base coat on his minimalist wallet, and here I am applying the the edge paint first coat. So I put two coats of edge paint. And then you'll see also then the final, that gloss finisher. It's a it's a protectant as well. And just what a great system. I mean, I never knew about this. I, I never knew about it. I was on one of my suppliers' website, and I went, huh, what's this? And I thought, well, oh, okay. Because edging is such a key. And honestly, I mean, there's times where I have certain edge paint products and edge coat products i'm just not 100 percent thrilled with you know they're cheap this stuff's not that expensive but it's not cheap so here is the final product where you're really going to be able to see these edges up close because this is with my macro lens so check that out check that minimalist wallet out is that cool or what i think joe's going to really love this well i hope so but check out his strap. There's my 38 millimeter Christopher Ward. And I'll tell you what, you guys, I have not sold a watch in 15 years. Okay, I haven't. And I was almost at the point, I probably would never sell a watch again. But 
here's the reality. That watch is a 38 millimeter. I said it on earlier episodes that I wish I had ordered this in 40 millimeters, but I ended up having my name engraved on the back. It's a 20 millimeter lug width, but it's really, it is a little small for my wrist. And the black one that I have, the Trident, uh, you know, C60, just the dive watch with a black dial, I, that's in 40 millimeters, and it fits me perfectly. So I'm contemplating on selling this watch, you know, and it would have to go to a good home, and I would make even a strap out of anything you would want, but you'd have to make me a pretty decent offer. So, you know, I'm not 100% saying I'm going to sell it, but I'm just putting it out there. If any of you guys would think about wanting to buy that watch, this this particular watch, my 38 millimeter Christopher Ward GMT. By the way, this is Mike in Atlanta strap right here. Gorgeous, but just showing you the edges in blue on this as well. So thank you for being patient, Mike. I'm going to get both of these orders out tomorrow, Monday, so that you guys should get them. Oh, midweek or later this this coming week. So I'm thinking about selling it, and just don't don't do it on YouTube. Contact me directly through my website, MichaelNapleather.com. Tell me you'd be interested. Let me know if you know you want to make an offer, and we can go from there. Okay. Well, listen. Thank you so much. God bless you guys, and until the next show, keep on ticking.